This week... I'm not sure that everybody would appreciate my naked woman. A madcap hotel... Most of the castle's in the air. It's just me dreaming. <laughs> ..on the brink of disaster... They are in a very desperate situation. They could lose the roof over their head. I'm terrified that I'm going to find out that Gordon and Blossom are destitute on the street. <laughs> I've come to Harwich in Essex. I'm here to help a business in serious trouble. But first, I want to do some digging about the town. Can I come and ask you a few things about Harwich? Because I've never been here before. I'm here to help a hotel. All right. Which um, hotel? I bet we can guess. Go on, try. The Continental. <laughs> How did you know that? Uh, we don't have many hotels here, and we know which ones might need help. <laughs> it's never promising when a hotel's reputation precedes it. Hotel Continental, good morning. Hotel Continental has been run for the last 20 years by Gordon and Blossom Hoyles. Right, got the keys. It sits in a prime position overlooking Dovercourt Bay. But this is no ordinary seaside hotel. There's an easy jet up there, 30,000 feet. That's a cloud in the sky. And then there's this blue sky. Complete with artificial grass underfoot. Uh, this was quite cheap. Clearly creative, poet Gordon has no professional design experience, but he curated every one of his 14 rooms. We've got some rain. Their rooms may cost £75 a night, but for Gordon, the comfort of his guests comes second to his creativity. We do get some daft people who say things, you know. Say, oh, well, the bathroom's a shed. Well, Christ, you know, you don't need a degree of rocket science to see that the bathroom is a shed. You know, I can't see what's wrong with the bathroom being a shed. And wife Blossom lets Gordon indulge in every creative whim he desires. Just outside. Peep the sheep. I so like Peep the sheep, do you? I do, I like him, yeah. I often sit in that room and look at him. If you want every room the same, you could try Pentonville, couldn't you? Before I set foot in the place, I want to know what last year's inmates made of Gordon's attention-grabbing designs. This one says it's unique, beautiful, quirky, homely, friendly and fun. And then the next one says, and I quote, it smelt like an old Ford Capri that someone had died in. And the owner has replied, I can't understand this. Every morning I do the rounds, remove all the cadavers and put them straight in the dustbin. Some of them are still warm. I certainly catch them before they start smelling. Not a particularly effective way of <laughs> responding to a negative review. Some of the reviews, I respond, I respond with a short poem. Dear guest, we loved you all we could during your brief stay. It seems we served you curate's egg, though you ordered Fabergé. Ha ha. While it seems that Gordon might have his head in the clouds, wife Blossom tries to keep an eye on the bottom line. For the last two years, we've actually made a loss, and we don't have reserves. Hotel guests are in short supply. Of 14 rooms, often only a couple are occupied. Our turnover's halved in the last three years. The hotel relies on trade from ferry passengers, but cheap flights and tunnel crossings have meant traffic from Harwich has dropped almost 40% in 10 years. Last year, we lost another ferry. It's been a steady decline in Harwich. With guests at an all-time low, the Hoyles are losing thousands of pounds a month and their debts are spiralling out of control. So our situation is very bad. You know, we're in a truly awkward position. It's getting worse rather than better, isn't it? In desperation, they even reluctantly agreed to try and sell the hotel. We've had this hotel on the market with a couple estate agents. Yeah. Uh, the first one did nothing. Another one put it on the market for about 20 weeks. Not one person turned around. We've had years of sleepless nights. 
I wake up in a nightmare sometimes thinking that, um, just, just wondering um, what the hell, you know, practically, what will we do? Tired of losing sleep and with no luck finding a buyer for the hotel, the desperate Hoyles have called me in. They want to see if there's any way of turning the hotel's fortunes round so they don't have to sell. But I'm under no false illusions. This could be one of my toughest challenges yet. Usually, as soon as I walk into a new hotel, I know pretty much what needs to be done. But sometimes I walk into hotels and I think, oh my goodness, what on earth am I going to do here? We are the worst pairs. <laughs> Definitely. You think so? I do, I do. We desperately need help, though. Yeah. We do desperately need help. Oh, uh, yeah. Like everyone else, I form an opinion before I've even stepped through the door of a hotel. It's not the worst two-star hotel I've ever rolled up in front of. It looks like it could do with a bit of a paint. And I'm not sure whether I entirely approve of the advertising that they've tried to do on the outside. Hot Conti. Snazzy. It looks tired, but it doesn't look disastrous. You know, if anything, currently I'm pleasantly surprised. But it seems I'm being watched. She's obviously deciding whether to come in. This is quite odd, isn't it? Quite unusual. She's coming in the hallway. Uh. I can see kind of what they're trying to do. This is all a bit... This is like old-fashioned Italian hotels used to be. Pensiones. And so actually is the tariff board. <laughs> I haven't seen one done like that for a while. She's looking in the lounge at the moment. Yeah. It's quite weird, isn't it? Some of Gordon's poetry. Don't twist yourself to solve the riddle. Ask who's got the biggest diddle. <laughs> well, clearly not me. Some prized works of art in oh. there. Some really unattractive modern art. It's probably an object of the tits. She's looking at the tits. We've got a board full of boobs. There's a pretty nasty stale smell in here. Let's hope it's less odorous in the breakfast room. Very odd. This is very odd. I would like to know, but oh, I might she's... never find out what she's got to say about it, but I'd be she... quite interested she's... to know. What are these columns doing in here? These kind of white and gold columns, along with the <laughs> leather pub chairs and the paper tablecloths. OK, well, I really hope the rest of the hotel's not like this, cos this is going to do my head in. I guess I'll ring for service. I'm Alex. You must be Gordon. I am indeed. Nice to meet you. How do you do? So, I've come to check in. You've come to check in. OK. Is that OK? That's fine. You know, I'll, get, I'll get a key. All right. I'll no. tell you straight up there. Thanks, Dom. That's key. Ooh. Here we've got room five. OK. All right. Thank you. There you are. So, are all your rooms like this? Is every room different? Every room is different. Is this a better room or a less good room? Um, I think it's one of the better ones, I OK. Think. Strange, but not completely unappealing. Hospital rail for the curtain, bit odd, to go with the polystyrene ceiling that also belongs in a hospital. However, I quite like the panelling effect, this kind of 70s vibe. Look, this desk is really fun, really nice. All oh, this is a bit shoddy. I'm feeling um, a little bit um, jittery. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know why I should do. I mean, she's quite a charming yeah. lady. I hate the stained carpet. It makes you think you don't really want to take your shoes off. This is really fun. Look, copper piping. Neat little wardrobe. Quirky, in a good way. We've got this mad bathroom. I 
really like it. I love the multicolored tiles. And this, importantly, looks immaculate. So it kind of slightly makes up for the shonky carpet. Bide here, that too is a very continental. It's rare to see a bide in an English hotel. This is really not bad. They've obviously done exactly what they wanted in terms of room design. Not a great place to be hungover. <laughs> watch the note to self, watch the drinking tonight. I feel quite well served, frankly. I mean, if this room is £75 a night, it costs the same as a Premier Inn room, basically. And I'd much rather spend the money here. But one room doesn't necessarily give the whole story, especially in a hotel like this. So I'm having a peek in some of the others. I do not particularly like this room. It's just a very jarring combination of objects. I would feel very depressed if I was given this room. They've clearly never had enough money to do the carpets because look at the state of this one too. Onward. And I like the garden shed. Some of the ideas are really great and some of them are absolutely terrible. This is an idea I don't mind. <laughs> ah! What am I going to do here? I mean, he's either genius or madman. It's bizarre. Young people might quite enjoy them, but not the sort of young people who can spend 75 quid a night. Rather nice light, but what the fuck is that? I mean, that looks like the wall is extruding a poo. <laughs> it's <laughs> deeply unpleasant. And the unpleasantness continues. And I'm horrified. You have to look at some of your costs. When I get to the bottom of the couple's financial problems, God, you've got so many bloody credit cards. Jeez Louise. I'm in the Essex coastal town of Harwich, where I've spent the night in what is, quite frankly, my most bonkers hotel yet. I mean, obviously, from what I've seen so far, I'm dealing with dreamers rather than business people. But their business is in big trouble, and owners Gordon and Blossom are struggling with debt. I'd like to have some idea about how much they owe. You know, Gordon's almost 80 and Blossom's 68. You know, do they have the energy for this? But first, some breakfast. The nine pounds organic offering at the Continental is in addition to the nightly room rate. Gosh, eggs supplied by Riverford Organic, pork sausages by Willow Hall Farm. But what that tells me is that they're spending quite a lot of money on their raw ingredients. I'm not sure that in this market they can necessarily charge the money they need to to recoup that cost. With the high price of organic ingredients, Gordon and Blossom might not be covering their costs. And how many guests are willing to pay? We've had people who've come and said, oh, I'm not paying £9 for breakfast, and they've gone somewhere else and bought a very cheap breakfast for £3.50. Really, you should be able to put breakfast on the table for £5. You start to question what you're doing, but I still, we have always stuck with this same principle. It's what works for us. But their current offering just doesn't add up to me. I feel very strongly that there's a real disjunct between the rooms and the breakfast offering and the public areas. Somehow I can't see someone who's prepared to spend £75 a night on a room and £9 a night on breakfast, particularly appreciating the surroundings now, for example. Hi, Good darling. Morning. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. Did Good. You, did you sleep well? I did. Oh, lovely. I've gone a bit off-piste because I just want poached eggs and some vegetables. Perfect. Mmm. I can't imagine many hotels that would encourage me, even allow me, to have vegetables with my poached egg in the morning. 
While it's admirable that the couple are sticking to their organic principles and are happy to offer variety, it's not a good way to make the hotel profitable. Gordon and Blossom don't just own the hotel. A few years ago, they took on a mortgage to buy three flats next door for luxury holiday rental. Ah, this must be it. Kind of classic, Gordon. How does one get through? <laughs> oh, I like this. This is a lovely room. Just like at the hotel, Gordon has let his creative eye run wild here. But at what cost? Some wallpaper. Nice wallpaper. Just what the naked ladies on. It's got more than naked ladies. It's got fornicating couples, I've just well, realised. <laughs> Gosh! I thought you might like it. I love it! <laughs> I've never seen anything like it, Gordon. I'm most impressed. A sort of instruction manual. <laughs> <laughs> some money in here. Oh, we just spend a fair bit, yeah. Looking around, it seems that Gordon and Blossom spent more than just a fair bit renovating the flats. But do the figures add up? We were trying to build environments that were luxurious, that would actually earn us a reasonable return. But it's not entirely panned out like that because there's just not the numbers coming to Harwich. I'm not sure that everybody <laughs> would necessarily appreciate my naked woman with her wet nipples and a bit of bush. <laughs> Once again, Gordon has managed to astonish and amaze me. I have never seen a bath like this. <laughs> Might take a while to fill. <laughs> I love it when hoteliers try to be creative. It makes for a much more interesting experience for the customer. But to allow those wilder flights of fantasy, you have to be ticking all the boxes of the basics first. That is comfort, cleanliness, and value for money. Back at the hotel, I want to focus on the basics. So the first thing is, there's lots about it I really like. I love your sheet room. This is the room I slept in, and mm. I love the wonderful wardrobe. I love the bathroom. But there are lots of people who would never even get to notice that because they would be obsessed with the carpet. And what I feel like is that you never really finish this hotel. Every room is not as amazing as this is. The quality isn't consistent. The flat sucked up some time and some money mm. and the enthusiasm. I mean, how long has this carpet been here? 14 years. More than that, obviously. I've got a pot of money which I could give you with the understanding that you ought to spend it on the things that desperately need upgrading in every room. So are you happy with that plan? Yes, very happy. Are you? Very happy. I'm glad there's a plan to deal with their worn-out rooms, but I need Gordon and Blossom to go much further than that. You have to look at some of your costs. I don't know how to trim them, obviously. I don't know how to do it. Don't buy Riverford Organic for your bloody guest food. You two eat organic. Let them eat cheap. I'm saying, do you really need Sky TV? Mm. My very successful hotels do not have Sky in the bedrooms because right. I know how much it bloody costs. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Every pound that you can take off that weekly total okay. is a pound less that you have to bloody earn. You know, you're not wrecked yet. No. So, while there's life, there's hope. Mm. OK, good. We're keen to go around the rooms and even oh. think about doing jobs because we haven't thought about doing jobs for some time no. because we just haven't seen the point. I, I think one of the best bits, though, was getting her approval, yeah. you know, to have someone of that stature. Tell them we're not all wrong. wrong. to the floor, it's 270. Gordon and Blossom waste no time getting stuck into my plan to update their rooms. Somebody spilt something here which is quite bad and I'm sure we've tried to get that out before. I want to get rid of these lights. For me, they look, look like clutter. Blossom is working hard to trim their overheads. We've made lots of savings already 
I'm very conscious anyway, I don't know about Gordon, but I'm very conscious of what I'm spending. And, I, and I'm also... Um... There's only who spends. Before long, some of the tired old rooms have been brought up to date. It's given us uh, something to aim for. The very idea that we can do something about some of these problems. But Gordon is still dreaming. Oh, blimey. Instead of following my plan to spend the money on essentials only, he's turning one of the hotel bedrooms into an aeroplane cabin. We need some aerial photographs to put in here, and they can all be different things. You could even rename the room the, um, the Five Mile High Room. In any partnership, when things go bad, it's often because there's been an enabler. That is, someone who's allowed the other one either to behave badly or to get into debt. And it's always a cautionary tale. You've got to rein people in from the excesses of their desires. Gordon and Blossom called me in to see if an overhaul of the hotel would be enough to save their business. I know they've got money troubles, but I need to know just how deeply in debt they really are. So, show me okay. the worst. Well, this is our list, list of creditors. creditors. We have a mortgage for this hotel yes. of 300,000. And we took a mortgage out of 240,000 on the flats. And we've also got a brewery loan of 130,000. So that's quite a big chunk of what you it's, owe, I imagine. Well, it's some of it. We owe a lot of money. OK. Uh, God, you've got so many bloody credit cards. Jeez Louise. We were getting into difficulties with bills, so some of the credit cards were used to pay bills. It's a case of trying to keep the business going in yeah. the hope that eventually you'll bring in enough money to pay everything off. How much money do you owe altogether? Well, it's just about a million quid, I would think. Um, OK. Oh, a million pounds worth of debt. I don't know how they sleep at night. It makes me so nervous for them. That is a big debt mountain to climb. So, to break even, you need about five grand a week. Yes. And that's just to keep the business running without paying back any debt. I think we've got to talk about long-term solutions and short-term solutions. Obviously, ultimately, everything is your decision, but to my mind, the mountain of debt you're facing is so extreme that the first thing to do is to try and reduce a chunk of it. I mean, if you sold three flats, you could generate 400,000, then it would definitely be worth doing. And then the rest you'll have to deal with by trying to build up the business. I think if there's any hope at all, we get the, we muster the energy and the enthusiasm. It's when you think that there's absolutely no hope that uh, it saps you. OK, darling. I don't want to give you any full storms. I've never been in this situation before either. You know, I've never been at a hotel that's so close to the verge. This is uncharted territory for me. Gordon and Blossom are dangerously close to the edge. I feel really sorry for Gordon and Blossom. I'm just devastated for them that they find themselves at this point, at this stage in their lives, having obviously worked quite hard. Most people in this position would allow at least a little tiny tear of self-pity to roll down their cheeks, but they haven't. And I admire that enormously. But are the couple in too deep? They are in a very desperate situation. To turn their fortunes around. They could lose the roof over their head. I'm trying to help a hotel that's in more debt than I've ever known. I've come to London. Good morning. Good morning. I've got an appointment with Mr. Brown. Yes, it's right to see you in the conference room, the left over there. Thank you. Thank you. I've got a meeting with Gordon and Blossom's solicitor. He knows how serious their debt problem so really I'm is. To start to my day. Yeah. So tell me, how bad is their financial situation? It's uh, very serious in terms of them owing a lot of money mm. to the revenue. They are in a very desperate situation. They could lose the roof over their head. 
So you may take the view that there is no realistic turnaround prospect and that the best thing that they could possibly do is to sell up. Okay. This is really hard. It's up to Gordon and Blossom what they choose to do next. But now I've heard the full extent of the problem, I think they only have one option. The wolf is at the door. It would take 10 years of full occupancy to pay off their debts, and sadly, they've just run out of time. The only way they're going to come out of this with anything is to sell up as soon as possible. I think that Gordon and Blossom need to break down their assets. Hello. Oh, hello. I'm Pim. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. I'm Blossom. The flats will be the easiest part of the business to sell first. I've sent an estate agent to value them. There's all sorts of things up there. Very interesting. Oh, They're yeah. bird feeders. Lots of castles in the air. Does that have a special significance for you, those castles? Um, not, not, I mean, it's just me dreaming. Uh -huh. <laughs> and they're all made out of rubbish. Toilet brushes. Yeah, interesting. If the Hoyles are to make a dent in their huge debt, they need to make as much money from the sale of these flats as they can. You've got expensive um, appliances in here, top of the range. Yes, I mean, we did go for quality. Good quality, yes. It's whether you're going to get that money back is the question. It's unlikely. It's small, a bit on the small side. One bedroom flat, average price in, in Harwich is between about 100,000 and 125. I think your, you know, price range is within that bracket. It's good news. If they can sell three of the flats, they will clear a big chunk of their debt. And after a few weeks on the market, they've already had offers on two of them. But Gordon is being choosy about who they sell one of the flats to. The bloke who's buying it is such an arsehole that I almost wrote to him and told him to go to hell and we'd find someone else. Uh, rather than be bullied and pushed around by this idiot. And now he's having doubts about even selling up at all. You know, the house altogether, it's about half a million quid, which would go a long way. But then your asset's gone, you've sold the family silver. You know, which is not always a good idea, is it? In business, it's incredibly important to be pragmatic. If it's not making money, cut your losses. You've already lost an awful lot of money. Do you also want to lose the shirt off your back? It's been six weeks since the flats went on the market, but despite the initial offers, none are yet sold. So I've asked to meet them for a crisis meeting. They have really, really dragged their feet about selling the flats. Selling is their only option, and I cannot understand why they've resisted that so much. So it's made me feel quite cross with them, because they've said they're prepared to do X, Y, Z, anything, 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 but clearly they're not. I hear you've had some offers on, some, on the flats. Well, we've had two offers. Mm. Altogether, it would raise um, 230,000. Are you not tempted to do that? Well, that doesn't seem to be a very wise decision. Because Why? he's talking about renting it to um, uh, a b and and there's been a lot of uh, news coverage about b and lately. But why would you care, darling? You need the money. Uh, well... I, I mean, what do you care what he does with it? I mean, it's none of your business once he's bought the flat, is it? Uh, not really, no. No. <laughs> 120 we have, we have grand been. will give you breathing space, stop everyone, you know, breathing down your neck and... Well, it might. Whilst we're very encouraged about the flats, we're still inside, not 100% sure that that's the way And to whilst go, I, I appreciate that, darling, the reality yeah. is, if it all falls down, all this will become an academic I discussion. I don't understand that. Yeah. yeah? Yeah. I think they're kind of very resistant to change in a way that doesn't surprise me but does make it quite difficult to present options to them because really I think they just hope they want to keep things going just the way they are at the moment, just a bit better. 
And so I've got to force them to see that they need to start making some proper decisions, not just hoping that something is going to descend from the clouds and make it all go away. It's not going to go away. They have to tackle their own problems. You know, I'd like to see them come out of this with something, or at least a roof over their heads. Time is not on Gordon and Blossom's side. Now it's clear there is no choice but to sell the hotel. Gordon and Blossom, can I introduce you to Graham, Robert, Martin and Anna? With previous attempts to sell proving unsuccessful, time is running out fast. So I've pulled together some of the UK's best property experts to tackle the problem of how we find a buyer. They owe credit cards, they owe, to the, they, they owe income tax, which is the nasty bastards who really chase you hard. Um, you know, I'm very conscious that therefore there's various opportunities for this all to implode. We're at a point in our lives where picking up the pieces and dusting yourself off and starting again is not an easy proposition. We were making payments, but we haven't been making payments for the last six months maybe nine months and so at the moment it's i don't know where it is it's well, a kind next, of yeah. it's a kind of it's floating it's, it's yeah. floating out that way your next Ready. at some point your yes. file is going to come to the yeah. top of someone's pile, pile. and yes. they're going to do what they do at the moment the banks haven't called their money in but that could happen this afternoon and then this is going to get a heck of a lot worse. And right now, you've got time on your side if you do something. Can we talk for a moment about what we might do for the hotel? What would be the best method of selling the hotel? We've got two options. You can try and sell it as a hotel or you can try and sell it to a developer. Um, ultimately, it'll probably be worth less to a developer than it will be to a hotel operator. The hotel market at the moment is a tricky one. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. How many individuals out there have a million pound to go and chuck into a business and potentially then spend more changing the rooms into their style? Not too many. But if you're going to just sell it as a property development, yeah. then all the work we've done there yeah. in, in improving the hotel we were just been rearranging the lectures on the Titanic. That's the fact. But, but, that, but that is the fact, though. I mean, the point is, it's going to go. So yeah, just well, don't... I'm not arguing yes. about that. No, but just stop I mean, worrying about what happens to it later. The no, point I'm not worrying about that, that either. Are... I mean, if you like, I won't go back today. I bloody well won't go back. That's where I'm at. OK, so I'm incredibly grateful to all of you for your time. Thank you so much. Sitting back is not an option. OK, thank you. That was really useful, but I'm so worried because I don't think that Gordon and Blossom really take on board the urgency of the situation. They have to act now or they could lose everything, end up with nothing. This is becoming a battle to save Gordon and Blossom from themselves. It's just the way the world works. No, it isn't. It it's, is, it's darling. Wrong. Well, OK, wrong. no, it isn't wrong. It's bloody unscrupulous. And I am um, out. <laughs> Where did that come from? In Harwich, it's game over for the Hotel Continental. In all the years I've been working with hotel owners, I've had plenty of occasion to tell them to shut up. This, however, is the first time I've ever had to tell owners to sell up. Gordon and Blossom are in an overwhelming amount of debt, and to my mind, the couple may be only left with one option. Last time I saw them, I felt quite frustrated because it's very unusual that you have four experts sitting in front of you and every single one of them gives you the same piece of advice. And yet still, and they couldn't bring themselves to kind of take a step and make a decision. They're just refusing to look this straight in the face. I'm terrified that, you know, not very long down the line, I'm going to find out that Gordon and Blossom are destitute on the street. The couple have worked hard to make the hotel more attractive to a potential buyer. They've agreed to let me bring in one of the agents from our meeting in London, who, in theory, could put the property on the market today. Hi, darlings. Hello. Robert, to see you. Hello, Robert. Awesome. Robert, nice to see you. Yes, and you. So, what would you value it at? 
If you go to the open market, I would recommend an asking price of £795,000. This is fantastic news. If they can achieve Robert's asking price for the hotel and sell the flats, they could completely clear their debt. So, are you prepared to sign up? I think we are. What about this thing, though? There is one fly in the ointment. Oh, what? Um, well, the trouble is we haven't mentioned it because we don't trust it. There's this gentleman yeah. who kept saying to us that he would find us a buyer. Right. And he kept saying, oh, we've got somebody. We kept sending all this stuff off. And it all came to nothing. And we just more or less said, look, go away. And we never heard any more until two weeks ago. He rang up and he said that he had somebody who was interested. His offer was 1.1. This isn't just for the hotel, it's yeah. for the whole thing. And it all seems very sunky to mm. me. Yeah, you know, and the whole that. point is that we want to try and get this yeah, sold. sold. So, do, do you see what I mean, yeah. darling? All I'm saying is that a decision from this person will be imminent. It's not well, going to be in six months' time or well, in Well, all right, then don't sign up with Rob. Then don't sign up. I would think he's going to make a decision whether or not he wants to buy it uh, within days. As usual, the decision is up to you. But I do think that, you know, you've got an opportunity to put yourself on a better footing with tried and tested practitioners. It might still take ages, but somehow he's got to know that it's worth doing even the initial legwork. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. Well, I mean, the thing to do is, I mean, you, you tell me how much is it going to cost us if this fellow does buy it? Unfortunately, it does come down to what is in the agreement, which is the... the, the Three percent, that we, is it? What was it? Uh, two, two percent. That, that we agreed two on. Two percent. But obviously I would still handle the transactions, the offers, the whole shebang for you. And 2% uh, of what, though? Of the agreed sale price. Talk about getting bogged down in the detail. They have a very reputable estate agent willing to handle the whole sale for them at a much reduced commission. And Gordon is quibbling over the details. You would charge a commission on next door as well? Yes, unfortunately. Well, so. that's not fair, is it? It's frustrating that Gordon is letting a hypothetical situation stand in the way of progress today. I understand why Gordon thinks that he should only pay him 2% on 800,000, but it just isn't how it works. It's bloody unscrupulous. It's wrong. No, it isn't wrong, Don. Just that don't I want, sign. If he wants 2% of 800,000, which he hasn't got yet anyway. No, I agree he hasn't got it. If he'd have said that, well, that's fair enough. Well, but he hasn't to, got it because he hasn't, he hasn't commission signed. On, on next door as well. You need to do what is right for you yeah, at the correct. end of the day. And Gordon will regret think, it I... afterwards if we don't do, if we don't sign the document. He'll, he'll, be, he'll be saying to me for the next three I mean, days, you, why haven't I done that? allows you to just take, take money like that. Well, the good, <laughs> good luck to it. It wouldn't allow me to do it. I'm out of it now. I've, I've said what I said, and I am out. Gosh, I finally think I've kind of inched them over some kind of finish line. Nope. It looks like a decision to put the hotel on the market with Robert is on hold. Well, let leave it. Think again. Give it a week. Thank you, Robert. No problem at all. All right. I'm really, really sorry. That was a complete curveball. You've been incredibly nice and very understanding. More than me, who feels like <laughs> leaping across the table and throttling Gordon at the moment. Sorry about that, Blossom, but I'm a bastard, you know that. Yes, <laughs> I do. <laughs> 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 you upset everybody. Well, you, you can't, you know, I, I just think that is unscrupulous. Anyway, I've just sunk that ship. But it might be, it might be, it might be all right in the end, I don't know. In this job, quite often you realise that some people are just not for changing. And if that happens, my hands are tied. What can I do? I mean, you're the most infuriating man that I've had the opportunity of dealing with for a very <laughs> long time. The infuriates me. I'm the absolute best at something. That's good. <laughs> I mean, honestly. I got first prize. I don't know whether to kiss you or throttle you. All right, my darlings. I mean, this isn't how I wanted to leave you. No. But... But then if we've got really good news, 
uh, you will find out. Can I give you a kiss? Well, oh, you can't do it. Because <laughs> <Okay. laughs> oh. I'm European. Oh. <laughs> oh, we're not all Europeans these days. Oh, I'm leaving <laughs> feeling very dissatisfied by how I've had to leave things. I find Gordon charming and completely irritating. And Blossom allows him to behave like that. <laughs> so I'm also cross with her. But ultimately, you know, it, it was always their decision. Um, and I just hope that they don't waste any more time, because time is something that they just have run out of. Hotel contract, good morning. Well, we made the decision, didn't we, to, um, to, to, to use Robert Dyer as the agent. Well, he's had more of a result in a couple of months than we had in as many years. We've got a bit of hope with him, haven't we? Yeah. yeah. You know, we are hopeful that even though the town is dying, the hotel will survive. And Frosta. You have to admire Gordon and Blossom's eternal optimism. They've stayed much more cheerful than most people would manage throughout this whole agonising story. Since Alex was here, Gordon has completed the room which he calls economy class. Uh, the original idea was just the lockers, and we got fortunate in, uh, in finding the other bits. I really do wish them all the luck in the world. I think they're going to need it. Mm -hmm.